Ghana's COVID-19 case count as of Saturday, September 5, stood at 44,777, with 43,693 recoveries or discharge cases, 283 deaths and 801 active cases. 64 new cases were announced on Friday, September 4, with Greater Accra region still at the top of the COVID-19 chart. Deputy Health Minister Dr. Bernard Okuboy describes Ghana's COVID-19 fight so far as inspiring. We are telling them that we can win the war against the virus. We are winning the war. The only threat now is complacency. And we are just entreating everybody not to be complacent. We are bent on keeping the protocols in place as long as this virus remains in the world's population. And it is not in a bid to worry businesses, but it's to make sure that we are alive to be able to uh, do more business going into the future. Despite the largely successful preventive measures and mitigating interventions accountable for Ghana's success story on the COVID-19 fight, the Ghana Health Service expressed worry over a possible second wave of attacks in the greater Accra region due to a growing disregard for anti-COVID protocols. Indeed, President Akufuado, in his 15th COVID-19 address, lamented as such. This worrying development seems to persist, despite a vigorous national anti-COVID-19 public education campaign being undertaken by the National Commission for Civic Education, NCCE. With support from the COVID-19 National Trust Fund, Chairperson of the Commission, Josephine Nkrumah, maintains that the public education is gaining ground. Some of our work too has covered monitoring the, the, the communities that we engage in, particularly churches, mosques, um, going to the field, um, dealing with the market women, the lorry stations, the, 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 tr the transport itself to see how people generally are complying with protocols in order for us to also tailor our education, know where the loopholes are, intensify where necessary. For her, people's attitude towards the virus and its spread is first being influenced by certain prejudices. Whatever name they call it, Koro Koro, you know, all the funny names that came out. The important things was for people to know that indeed this existed. Of course, there was a lot of disbelief and that was one of our major challenges as a commission as we educated on the ground, where you had people who just thought that this did not exist. Some of it, um, for their own cultural beliefs, there were people who thought that it was um, witchcraft, it had to do with curses, and then you had a lot of um, misinformation on social media as well. However, the health ministry says these campaigns must be sustained lest the gains made are undone. When people are not complying to a measure that can save them or keep them healthy, you have to do a lot of education. And when I say a lot of education, it is repetition it is going into details, it is appealing, it is continuing with the, uh, how do you call it, with the, with the facts of COVID-19. And that is something that cannot be done in just a day. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected many facets of life and threatened livelihoods. The CSO platform on SDGs in a survey revealed a dire impact of COVID-19 on all facets of national life. For instance, it shows that at least 17% of people have lost their jobs and close to 58% of the respondents knew private business owners who had closed their businesses due to the impact of COVID-19. At present, the ban on political rallies, clubs, beaches, amongst others, is still in force. The remainder of the school term for lower levels of education has also been postponed to 2021. So, how about the December elections? Should it also be postponed? There are activities that are crucial to the functioning of the state. So that if you are not careful, you might not postpone the election only for a year. If this virus is globally present and our vaccines don't achieve the things we want them, if for five years you are having huge numbers in the global population, it means you might have one president being there for the next 10, 15 years because of the COVID. So what do we do? A public health person will give this advice. Whatever arrangement you put in place for the election, put in place risk reduction measures. 
Election is one day. So the issue of crowd and crowd control is most critical at this point. The issue of us understanding why we must all be masked up is critical. Going there with our sanitizers, going there with all that is necessary, social distancing when you are queuing, are very important.